cool stuff. I have a few tokens here uh, to digress uh, for a moment. Good for food, free food. How about that? Food is free. Uh, so I'm told that if I ask a couple of questions and you've got to answer it, then I'm going to just distribute them. So let me just ask quickly, how many people are using Connect at home already? Anybody? All right, one winner here in the front row. That wasn't hard. <laughs> One for you also. Here. Here you go. OK, we'll do some more questions afterwards. Very easy. Uh, OK, so our next presenter is, um, whoa, is going to be me falling over. Uh, Steve Coots from um, Yplay. So let's bring Steve out. You going here? Hello, Boston, and bon appétit. <laughs> OK, my name is uh, Steve Coots. And besides liking relevant content on my TV, I'm the Vice President of Sales and Business Development for Yplay. I'm here today to discuss the Yplay single sign-on authentication application. It's our first time here in Boston, so just a, a quick uh, talk about why play a little bit here right now. We provide the state-of-the-art software solutions for set-top boxes, OTT platforms, the multi-screen experience for some of Europe's leading satellite operators, IPTV operators, and of course we're here now for the cable. We have an install base of several million uh, subscribers right now. So we feel that we're in a good position to speak about uh, new functionality and where the roadmap and software is going right now. We're here in, Nor in Boston and North America to repeat the success that we've had in Europe here in North America. So the business problem that I want to talk about today is the single sign-on from two perspectives. The first perspective right now is from an operator. What's important for the operator right now is to drive revenue. And how does an operator today drive revenue? The operator has to either present and sell more relevant content to the end user or ad space, okay, relevant ad space. And how does the operator have to do that? The operator still has this problem of who is in front of my television, okay? So that's the operator perspective. From our sales is subscribers' perspectives now, the, the question also comes is how do I get relevant content to me that I can consume. The same issue there is the TV needs to know who is in front of the TV, that's me. So I need to be able to identify myself. In each case, the unique and same problem is right now is who is in front of the television. That's the, the authentication if you want. So how is this best accomplished right now? There's several, several ways of trying to find out who's in front of the screen. Today, we probably use the personal PIN code through your remote control. It can be kludgy. It's not necessarily easy to do. You can forget it. And quite frankly, it's not necessarily secure. You and your kids may have uh, similar PIN codes. If they find it, uh, you end up with relevant uh, uh, content that may not be appropriate for, uh, for the, uh, the family. The other method being used today is face recognition. Uh, it's not ready yet, we don't think. Uh, it can be kludgy, and it's not necessarily reliable. So what Yplay is proposing right now is, is a different third solution right now called audio recognition. So what is audio recognition? It's not speech recognition. It's not recognizing words. It's recognizing the DNA in your voice, just like your fingerprints, okay? So it's unique, it's intuitive, uh, and, it's, and it's natural. It doesn't care if you're speaking English or Spanish or Polish, okay? So let me now go to a demo here of what this would be, and the use case would be as I arrive home, um, and I want to watch relevant content on my TV. So it's a two-step process today. I need to have a companion device today that has a microphone as well as a camera in it. Um, I'll start the application here now, first of all, on the set-top box, where I start the Yplay single sign-on widget. It's there. The end user now will be presented a QR barcode, where I have it. On the actual companion device now, I do the same thing. I start our application, which resides on a companion device, in this case, a tablet. 
so the Y play connect. I'm asked to connect the device to the QR code. I click on that. The camera is now activated. I turn to the screen. The pairing process is now complete. So the Y play companion application now asks me to identify the user. Now I start the actual voice authentication. So identify me, for example. It asks me to click to start recording to check my voice, my DNA. My name is Steve Coots, and I like relevant content on my TV. A little patience here. My name is Steve Coots, and I like relevant content on my TV. All right, second time. The pairing is now complete. It identifies Welcome Steve. Now what would happen with the operator? The operator now knows it's Steve Coots that's in front of both the TV and as well as the companion device. So now the operator is in a position now to only to customize the experience for Steve Coots. All my personal content, all my recommendations, all my social networking, everything else that per pertains just to me. So it's a very personal experience. So the advantages of the Y Play audio single sign-on today is it's, it's intuitive, it's natural, it's as easy as speaking, and it's here today and ready to deploy. Uh, if anybody wants to see this in for further detail, we're here on the floor. I welcome you all to come see the demo yourself and play with it yourself too. Steve, let me, let me ask you a couple of questions quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So how long does it take for the device to learn the DNA in your voice? What's the process for that happening behind the scenes? The process is very simple. Um, you have to speak into it typically the first time it's training. It's uh, two times or three times you say a, a phrase that's perhaps three seconds long, and then after that it recognizes it. Okay, and the other thing is, uh, what about ambient noise? There's a little bit of it here in this room. It didn't work the first time, it did the second time. That's How why. Okay. Yeah, so typically, I mean, if you're, if you're in a very, very noisy environment right now, you may have some issues with that right now, as you're seeing here with there's some echo where I am right now. Yeah. So it was obviously echoing into the microphone the first time. Yeah. But uh, it's quite reliable. It's been very reliable here on the show, and there's a lot of ambient noise here. Okay. But if you have your kid coming in with a horn or something like that, then that might create a problem. Okay. So but, if your yeah. baby is screaming in the background while you're trying to trigger it, it might not work. Uh, I don't have a baby, but I'm, I'm well. sure that probably could, uh, could create some interference, so yeah. Okay, and deployed anywhere yet? Testing, What's, uh, where does it stand? It's, uh, it's just developed right now. We're okay. just rolling this out right now. We're in several discussions with the operators uh, now for this product right now. Uh, as you can see behind it, there's no, the, the authentication takes place but there's no customization yet, but that's what we want to do next with the operator now, is now with, you know, for example, yourself being identified, then all your UI experience would change. So we're in discussions with several of our key European operators right now on that. Okay, good. Well, Steve, thanks very much for coming by. Thank you. And thanks for the pictures, too. They look great. Yeah. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> Not all of them were Boston. <laughs>